In this cap, we will focus on the scope and sequence of phonics learning and the specific skills that students learn along the way. The information in this cap greatly depends on your understanding previous content, specifically phonological awareness, reading fluency, and automaticity. We'll review these briefly in a moment, but if you need to review that content further, please revisit those caps and watch them again. Let's start with identifying the big ideas that are the foundation of this cap. First, we've been using the term phonemic awareness, and as we start to talk about teaching and learning with phonics, we'll just use the term phonics. Second, as students acquire knowledge of phonics, they essentially are mastering a progression of skills. We'll look at each of those skills, but two of the most important in that progression are blending and segmenting. And third, from the teacher's perspective, teaching phonics is essential to building students' automaticity and fluency which includes students' ability to both decode and encode words. Before we dive into all that new information, let's review some essential background knowledge from previous CAPS and class sessions. One of the key concepts from this course so far is that phonological awareness is a broad set of skills that is the basis for early literacy. We have also previously learned that phonemes are the smallest unit of speech sound. Phonics instruction is, of course, focused on students' ability to identify and use phonemes, which is their phonemic awareness. You also should have noticed the word automaticity in previous material. This is the student's ability to recognize a word effortlessly and quickly. Now let's take a look at some newer terms. Decoding is the ability to convert a word from print to speech. You may have seen this term mentioned in other readings or caps too. So to put it more simply, what this really means is reading words. Sometimes decoding is also called word attack or word identification skills. So if decoding is being able to go from print to speech, then encoding is the ability to convert a word from speech to print. And again, to simplify, this just means writing words with their correct sounds and letters in the correct order. Now let's take a closer look at the progression of phonics skills students need in order to be able to decode and encode words. We'll present these skills in order from the simplest to the most complex. This doesn't necessarily mean they're always strictly taught in this order. In many phonics lessons, teachers will address several of these at once through different activities. The simplest of these skills is just being able to identify individual phonemes. This depends on the student's understanding of the alphabetic principle, knowing that sounds represent letters and letters represent sounds. So let's say you say and show a student the words top girl, and ball, and ask the student which word has a t sound. You are assessing the student's ability to do this skill, detecting individual phonemes. Next is matching individual phonemes within words. This means whether the student can not only identify a specific phoneme in a familiar word, but whether they can generalize and also identify it in an unfamiliar word. As an example, you might say and show the student the words ball, dog, and cat and ask the student to identify the word that has the same beginning sound as the word call. Next is blending phonemes. We're going to talk a little bit more later on about why this is a very important skill, but for now, we'll define it as being able to see or hear individual phonemes and identify the word that they make together. For example, using the word sun, you could ask the student, either showing the letters or making the sounds or both, what word do these sounds make? S, a. Uh. Mm. Along with blending, another really important skill that we're going to spend more time on later is segmenting phonemes. This is what students are doing when they sound out a word. So using the word sun again, this time you would simply show the word and have the student say it sound by sound. Being able to remove or delete an individual phoneme from a word is also an important skill in phonics learning. In order to demonstrate this skill, the student would need to be able to drop a sound from a word and form a new word, such as deleting the s sound from the word sit and recognizing the word it. Manipulating individual phonemes within a word is the next skill in this progression. This means that the student can move phonemes around within a word or can substitute a new phoneme after deleting one from the word. To master this skill, the student would need to know and demonstrate that if you delete the k sound in cat and substitute the m mm sound, he or she would get the word mat. The last and most complex skill in this progression is rhyming. 
As skilled and experienced readers, we think of rhyming as a pretty basic skill, but if you look at this whole progression, you realize that you need to be able to do all these other skills in order to identify words that rhyme and words that don't rhyme. Now let's take a step back and focus in on these two skills, blending and segmenting. According to research, students' abilities to blend and segment individual phonemes are ultimately the most important for learning to read. Let's pause and think about this for a moment. Based on what you know about phonics and early literacy, why do you think those two skills are the most important for learning to read? To answer that question, first of all, remember that reading fluently means reading accurately and at an appropriate pace. Fluency also includes reading with appropriate expression, but for now let's focus on accuracy and pace. So what do we mean by reading accurately? Well, we mean decoding. And as we just learned, decoding is essentially being able to blend and segment phonemes. Remember sounding out words? Okay, now let's break down what we mean by reading at an appropriate pace. This means automaticity. And automaticity is being able to recognize words without having to decode every single sound. And all of that is why teachers often focus their phonics instruction or interventions for students who are struggling readers and maybe older around blending and segmenting. These essential phonic skills are directly connected to building students' automaticity and reading fluency. To show this in action, here's a quick clip of a teacher, Mrs. Booth, working on decoding with a student from her first grade class. So this is one of our red words, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you show me how we're going to use our on and on that side where we already know? T-H-E-Z. Let's do it again. T-H-E. Z. So what is this word? Z. Z. Can you show me, using your typing hand, how we can figure out what this word is? Z. Okay, remember to pound it. Do it for me again. Z. Awesome. So what does this say so far? Z. Z. Okay, can you sound this word out for me too? Um, so, so what's this word? So, Can you read the title of that book for me? The, the Sun. The Sun. Excellent. I like the way you read that part. Now let's review all the information that we've covered in this video. We began by identifying these three big ideas about the important role of teaching and learning phonics skills in early literacy. We also defined decoding and encoding. We saw how phonics skills progress from simple to complex, and we mentioned some examples of each of the skills in this progression. And finally, we demonstrated why phoneme blending and segmenting skills are the most important for learning to read. That's all for this cap on phonics skills and instruction. Thanks for watching.